Okay, welcome. So today is our Tuesday Bliss Techniques meeting. It's nice to have you here. So as usual, we'll have a, uh, at least as usual lately, we'll have a guided practice. And the purpose of this guided practice is uh, to bring healing into your life, into your experience. And uh, so we want to start, ideally, hopefully, with that proper expectation. So just notice right now as we're getting started that you have this is important opportunity, which is to have clarity on your healing intention. So whatever that is, just be clear on what it is and know that it is good. If you're not clear on what that is and you don't know where to begin, then just start with what you think is the problem of your life or problems. Try to limit it to three one to three of your top problems in life, whatever they may be, relationship issues, health problems, uh, negative thinking, um, pain, uh, resentment, financial problems, whatever it may be. And then you know what it is that your intention is because your true intention is to resolve those things that are the troubles for you, to resolve them truly in a good way. So, you know, if you, if you, if you, you know, if you have financial difficulties, as an example, I know none of you have financial difficulties, but, <laughs> you know, if you have somebody somewhere happened to have financial difficulties, then the idea here is you say, well, what is this that's really, what is this that I'm I'm really struggling with? What's the real problem here? It's not really a financial issue. It's a, it's a poverty consciousness. It's a feeling of lack. It's a fear of, uh, of, of not enough. Um, it's a sense of disconnection from source. So uh, produces anxiety and security because there's a sense of disconnection disempowerment you don't know how to do it you don't know where to turn you don't know you know these sorts of things so then what do you want well clearly what you want is abundance <laughs> true abundance the, the abundance of uh, connection security truth so that's your intention then you see how it works so you just if you if you're not sure what your intention is, then you start with whatever your problem is. And then you find from the problem, what is the, the problem is really some uh, that you, you, you perceive that there's a lack of something that you desire. So if it's a, if you have chronic physical pain, for example, or acute physical pain, <laughs> physical pain, what you would call physical pain, what you, what you want so you you want uh, an, an abundance of uh, of good feeling. You want to feel good. You want to have a sense of health, uh, stability, uh, strength, suppleness, capacity. So, okay, hopefully you're clear on your intention now. So feel the intention. See, this is important. So really feel the intention, whatever this intention is. And what you say, well, I don't, maybe you don't know how to feel the intention. Well, what I mean is you feel what it is that you're really wanting. So this, you have to notice that what you really want, this true desire, already that exists in you. Maybe, maybe it seems small, maybe it seems uh, difficult to access, weak, uh, and any of these things are possible, but it, it does exist in some form or fashion because you can at least imagine it. You can at least think of it. So it already exists there, at least in a seed form. 
So I want you to take a moment to really connect with it at whatever, however you can do that to the best of your ability to actually feel what that is, that feeling that you want, the feeling of goodness, health, happiness, peace, clarity, security, whatever it is. And then just notice what it is that seems to be the obstacle to that. So maybe you've already figured this out because you maybe you started with the problem. But just notice what it what is it that seems to be the obstacle to it? So it could be the thoughts, could be the sensations, it could be the images, whatever it is, just notice whatever it is that seems to be the obstacle, seems to interfere with the with this uh, fulfillment of this desire. See, the fulfillment of the desire is already within you. That's the point I want you to recognize that it already exists but maybe not it hasn't allowed been allowed to flourish to your satisfaction so first notice that it's there in some form in you because at the very least you can think of it so that proves that it's there at least in thought form and then notice when you connect with it hopefully feel this in some way notice what it is that seems to be the obstacle and you'll see much in this so this is like the secret formula that you now have for healing so with this intention and with some recognition of the obstacles that are, are there in habit for you whatever they may be now we're ready to take to participate in this guided practice and the guided practice know that this guided practice is in support of your clear intention so just dedicate this practice to that intention. And you don't have to know exactly how the practice could possibly help you with whatever your intention is. Just be willing to be curious and just see how it could be possible. Just to have, just say, okay, I'm willing, I'll, I'll play. I'm dedicating, all you have to do, just say it in your mind, just silently. I dedicate this practice to the fulfillment of this intention whatever that intention is for you. So for today's practice, as usual, I'm going to give you various things that you can do. And uh, it's important, and it's an important part of the process that you are present and that you are uh, participating fully, which means that you have to keep in mind these uh, we're learning certain things. So there are certain lessons in life that we're being guided and supported in learning. Some of those are uh, self-acceptance, self-care. And um, we can, and self-forgiveness. So forgiveness of others as well. But we can just be present as we're uh, doing this practice and notice where we have a tendency, where you have a tendency, to um, not to to not practice self care or self love or self forgiveness. So a lot of this we don't notice, and this is the violence that I often refer to. We don't notice it; it's unconscious. But through this practice, it's revealed to us. So when ever there is something that is suggested to you that I'll suggest to you, take it as a suggestion for you to uh, possibly make use of in your healing practice. But you have to determine whether it's actually appropriate for you or not. So don't do things that hurt. Don't do things that feel unsafe that you don't have confidence in. Okay. That's really important. So that's a part of the healing process is that we're learning those lessons. So that hopefully that's clear to you what I'm saying. So uh, you can always modify and know that just simply by participating, you can benefit. So you don't have to be able to do any of the things that I suggest in the way that you think that I'm saying that they need to be done in order for you to benefit. 
if you can do them in the way that I suggest, then that will be wonderful. But if not, then don't. And you can modify. So the, we'll start just by where you are. It's always a good place to start. So notice, wh however you are right now, maybe you're sitting, maybe you're lying down, maybe you're in a chair, maybe you're on the floor. I don't know, but wherever you are, just notice where you're starting. And notice that right now you can discover just by giving your attention what I call the low-hanging fruit, whatever it is that you're presently, habitually, unconsciously doing or holding, that you can let go. Just whatever you can easily make conscious and volitionally, volitionally let go of. So don't strive for big things. Don't demand uh, excessively of yourself. Just whatever is the low-hanging fruit. That's why, that's why it's the low-hanging fruit. So just see if we can make it easy from the very beginning. Because sometimes, like I know me, I tend to make things harder than they need to be. So let's see if we could maybe make them easy. Just give ourselves that. And maybe there's some thing that rebels against that in our in our conditioning that says, no, that's not I have to do it the hard way. If not, then good for you. But if you notice some of that kind of thing, then just notice that you can become aware and you can let go. Next, let's notice the breath. So the breath is our companion in life. It's here from the first to the last. And the breath is the uh, it, it is really in in uh, indistinguishable from uh, well, that's not entirely true. It's largely in, indistinguishable, except for at a very very subtle level from um, from the life uh, itself. So it's our it's a gift from the divine. It is a divine gift, and. How often do we actually perceive that? So now could be one of those moments. So just let that in. Just open to that. Open to the breath as a divine gift and receive that gift. So if possible, breathe through the nose and let the inhalation, just natural inhalation, natural exhalation through the nose, but with awareness so that as you're inhaling through the nose naturally, you just receive that fully. Just allow yourself to really receive that gift. Maybe you are clear on how to receive, and maybe you're so unclear on how to receive that you don't even know where to begin with that. But wherever you are on that spectrum, just open to it and see that nature is providing you everything that's needed, everything. You know, every, everything, you don't, you don't do it really. You know, the breath is, you're not doing the breath. The breath is truly a gift. The, the, the breath itself and from the outs, the outside to the inside, all of the processes inside that the breath uh, moves by, they're unknown to you. It's a complete mystery to you how that works what it is that's happening and yet it's happening so here we have proof positive that nature is constantly giving you a healing gift you you can't even really avoid it but are you, we we only really receive it to the degree that we really receive it so we open to receiving and it's such as seems like such a simple subtle thing and yet it's very very powerful so really feel as you're inhaling that you're receiving that gift. And then as you're exhaling, just be willing to just surrender completely to the divine. So we're just observing the natural inhalation, natural exhalation should be comfortable through the nose uh, if possible. 
And it's with intention, with awareness, with attention. So as you inhale, you're receiving that healing gift of nature. You're really having that clear intention that you're receiving. So feel that as thoroughly as you possibly can. And with each exhalation, you're surrendering completely to the divine. So surrendering. Here, I want you to, I'll invite you at least to have this sense of 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 being held by like an infant being held by the mother that kind of surrender that you don't need to struggle against your own mother i've mentioned this before i'll mention it now sometimes when uh babies are very young still nursing uh sometimes they get fussy they're tired but they don't know they're tired. They're hungry, but they don't know they're hungry. And so they're fussy. They're refusing everything and they will, you know, refuse the, the breast even. But when they're finally, finally can just receive, then they can surrender. And then they, you know, they receive the nourishment, they receive the rest and the support. So that's the image. Receive with every inhalation and surrender in that same, in that sense that I'm describing with every exhalation so that you can more deeply receive, you can receive the support, the rest, the healing. So this is a perfect, wonderful place to remain or to return to at any time and know that the fullness of uh, the healing is possible just with this so you don't have to do anything more than this. But if you're interested and if you're able, then I'll propose some other things that you can explore that may be supportive. So um, if you have a space for it, uh, then let's explore on all fours. So you'll want somewhere on the floor that is um, going to be comfortable for you to be on all fours. So whatever that means, like probably a rug or a carpet or a yoga mat or something, a uh, blanket so that you can feel comfortable on all fours, on hands and knees. And just get into that position and see that can you get into that position in a good way? Can you actually be in that position in a good way? So a lot of the time we're very uh, focused on goals. I think, I think this is true. This is my experience and I observe it. So you can see if it's true for you. But I, I think a lot of the time we're very f focused on goals, like destinations, uh, we have an idea of something that we want, and so we are focused on that thing that we want. Like, let's say the idea comes, I'm thirsty. The goal immediately appears, I want a glass of water. So we tend to be remain focused on the goal, even though there's a whole process that's involved in that. It's not just the goal. And so how we arrive at the goal is uh, just as important as the goal, in some ways more important. So uh, I'm inviting you in this exploration presently to notice how you are involved and engaged in the process. So just notice with the whole thing, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that can come up like feelings, thoughts, memories, so, for example, you might have a thought, like an impatient thought is a possibility. Maybe not you, you may not be impatient, but perhaps a person tends toward impatience might have an impatient thought, like, how long am I going to have to do this? What we can do is slow down and observe, why am I having that thought, whether it's a impatient thought or an angry thought or an anxious thought or an eager thought or any kind of thought why am i having that thought and 
I'm going to propose that there's some kind of, there's a somatic component that underlies that. So you can notice how you're feeling and how you are here in this posture. So what's comfortable, what's uncomfortable? Notice what you're doing that is contributing to comfort or discomfort. Are you still breathing? Are you still breathing through the nose? That will help. That's always a helpful thing. Notice what you're doing with the shoulders. So shoulders could be toward the ears. They could be away from the ears. They could be toward the back. They could be away from the back. What are you doing in the wrists? You holding tension in the wrists? What about in the elbows? What about in the neck? Do you perceive the connection between your head and spine all the way down to the tailbone? Are you holding things somewhere along there that don't need to be held? Okay, so now let's help ourselves. We can, oh, let me remind you always, it's good to rest whenever you need. And remember that you don't need to do this at all. So if you don't know how to do it in a good way, then don't. If you are fatiguing, then rest, and then you can resume whenever you're ready. And that's general, a general recommendation. So I'm not going to specifically tell you when to rest. Rather, it's an important part of the healing process for you to learn when to rest and how to rest and to give yourself that. So now for those who would like to explore uh, some other things, we can explore uh, various movements that we can do from this all fours position. So for example, we can turn the head, let's say to the left, like you wanna look back at your left foot. Now notice, you're going to just do this slowly according using the basic principles of somatic exploration slowly smoothly consciously repeat this many times looking back as if toward the left foot you might not actually see the left foot don't fall or strain trying to see the left foot if that's not going to happen for you but just that's the general idea is that you're moving in that direction you might only see your left shoulder you might not even see your left shoulder. Whatever it is for you, just that, look there and then look back to center. Repeat this many times, seeing that it's possible to continue to breathe through the nose with awareness. And each time, see, can you make it nicer? Can you make it easier? Can you make it more pleasant? Can you make it more pleasurable? Can you actually find a way to enjoy this? So notice the, the, the instruction is a direction. It's a goal. Look as if toward the left foot. So notice right from the sets, from the get-go, we're set up to do it mindlessly. But, in, but now see it's training process. Now I'm, I'm wanting to, Instead of just trying to see my foot, that just gives me direction, but now I'm going to enjoy the process. I'm going to enjoy and find pleasure in this process. So that's your goal. Find the pleasure. See how nice can it be? And if you don't know how for it to be pleasurable or pleasant or nice or enjoyable. See why not. See what seems to be in the way and see if maybe you could, maybe if there's more low hanging fruit that you could discover that you could let go of that will allow you to open to this in a good way. Okay, now when you next come to center, just pause and notice 
whatever you can notice here. So you've done a bunch of movement. We're coming back to more or less generally where we started from on all fours in the center. But you should have more awareness now. So whatever you notice, just see, is there more low hanging fruit that you can discover now just by pausing here so that you can find that pleasure more deeply here, just being here. See if it's possible that you can open to that. And then still breathing through the nose, if possible, with awareness. See about turning to the right. So same thing, but mirrored to the right. So right to center, right to center, with awareness, slowly, smoothly. Just whatever is comfortable and confident for you. Not straining, but opening with each movement, opening to greater pleasure, greater ease, greater confidence. And then you could even see what about looking all the way, the full arc, all the way from left, all the way through center to right and back a few times. Just see what is possible with confidence and comfort. So you'll notice, hopefully, maybe, perhaps as you're doing that full arc, you get more information because now you can compare left to right. So you start to notice where the discrepancies are, left to right, what feels different. And each time you do it with awareness, slowly and smoothly, maybe you can allow it to get smoother, clearer, more confident, more balanced. And then when you next come to center, pause there. And remember that you can always rest anytime and you should, whenever that's appropriate for you. So uh, now let's, if it's, if it's appropriate for you, I'll invite you to explore rocking slowly forward and backward. So on all fours, rocking slowly forward and backward, just within your range of comfort and confidence. And as you're rocking forward and backward, just notice that there's a lot that you can be aware of. So one thing that I'll point out to you is where are you looking? So the way that we look, the way where our head is and eyes are oriented, uh, has a very significant impact on our experience. Shouldn't be a big surprise, but kind of maybe comes as a big surprise. So um, we've all, pr pr probably, presumably, we've all had the experience, but just not recently in our lives, of being on all fours quite a lot because there was a phase of our development for the vast majority of us in which we crawled. So if you think about that now, if you think about this more as a crawling kind of thing, and if you had the room to do it, you could in fact crawl and that would be quite a nice uh, thing to do. But if you don't have, <laughs> then rocking is the next best thing. But you think, okay, if if you were to crawl, so here you are rocking, imagining it's a it's crawling light or crawling practice, crawling preparation. Where are you looking? Obviously, I say obviously, you want to be looking ahead or somewhat up, not down. Because if you're looking down and you're trying to crawl, you're likely to run into stuff. Okay, so notice that your head is connected to your spine all the way down to the tailbone. So when you look up, your whole spine has to cooperate. So notice as you're looking forward, I'm saying up but forward, okay, then you're 
and you're rocking, then your whole spine has to be coordinated with this movement. So as you rock forward, just a little bit, don't, nothing that's too much for you, but just if you rock forward a little bit, your whole spine has to extend so that your chest opens so that you don't just get this little tiny uh, bend in the neck, but the whole spine is like a bow. So the force is, is uh, distributed across the entire spine. Much better way. So this simple thing of just rocking slowly, gently, just within your range of comfort, whatever that may be, looking forward, looking ahead with awareness of the whole spine, the chest opening is very, very helpful, connective, connects everything. Now, remember, you can rest anytime you want. Uh, but you can start to add in other elements here. So, for example, you could uh, you could look back to the side, or you know, look to the left. Let's say as you're rocking, try to coordinate that movement with the rocking. So, for example, you could try as you rock forward, looking to the left, and as you rock back, you could look forward. So you could try to coordinate it in that way. And then, you, or you could try the opposite coordination. That is, as you rock forward, you could try looking forward. And as you rock back, you could turn and look to the left. But as you're doing this, just notice adds a lot more complexity. So you might have to slow it down. And you might have to slightly reduce the amount of the movement that you're doing. So it's one of those important lessons of nature that I've been pointing out recently, which is that, well, number one, we have to start where we are. And two, we have to uh, master each of the steps before we can, before we have a mastery of the whole thing. So, or put another way, you have to walk before you run. So here we're adding in complexity. So we, we have conceptually, we have three planes of movement, you know, side to side, up and down, forward and back. And so if we're moving in one, just one plane, and then we add in a second, then we've doubled the complexity of our movement. If we add in a third, then I'm not sure the math of that, but We've, we've increased significantly the complexity. So you're now moving in three planes because you're aware of the curvature of the spine. You're rocking forward and backward and maybe you're turning to the left. So that's three planes of movement. That's very complex stuff. So be be uh, appreciative of that, uh, and appreciative in the sense of appreciate the complexity that you're asking of yourself. Slow down, make it good, make it nice, make it pleasant. You can, of course, also look to the right. It doesn't have to be just to the left, so try looking to the right. And remember that you can rest anytime that you need. Hopefully you're breathing through the nose. So now, um, if you're able to come rock all the way back slowly, work your way slowly to uh, rocking back so that you're sitting on your heels. Um, you're, so it'll, it'll bring you into what's called child's pose because your hands will still be on the floor in front of you but your buttocks will come onto the heels you'll be folded at the hips so your torso will come to lie on the thighs if or between the thighs depending on how you have your 
how wide your knees are. So this may work for you, it may not work for you. It's, uh, you take your time with it, but uh, if that's not going to happen for you, then just you don't do that. So you can you've got a lot of different things now that you can choose from, all of which are very very excellent things. So you could just sit and breathe through the nose with awareness with intention. You could lie down, breathe through the nose with intention. You could be just on all fours, breathing through the nose with intention. You could be uh, rocking on all fours, etc. So a lot of different possibilities. You could just, if you need to just completely do nothing and just take a nap, you could do that. So a lot of different possibilities. Um, for those who are able and find it uh, nice to come back in a child's pose, then uh, do so. And notice that your breathing is um, shown to you in new ways as you're in this posture. So in, in other words, you'll feel things. That you, you'll notice things you, that w wouldn't be so obvious to you when you're in a different position. So if you're able to really let the chest come to rest on the thighs or between the thighs, for example, then really explore letting that rest happen deeply so that as you're inhaling and exhaling, notice that do you have a habit of tensing up in the chest or in the abdomen? And see that you can relax that that habit so that the chest and the abdomen can really just come to rest on the thighs or between the thighs. And you can also, if it's comfortable for you, you could bring instead of the arms being overhead, they you could bring them behind you so that they rest uh, palms up at your near near on the floor near your uh, hips it depends on the length of your arms but in that general direction um, so this would further encourage a complete relaxation uh, into this posture if it's comfortable for you okay so if it's comfortable for you to be here. I'm going to um, suggest some explorations that we can do from this posture. So the head should, the forehead or somewhere generally this area of the head, front top of the head, needs to be um, resting on the floor for you to uh, do the, the next few explorations that I'm going to suggest to you. So if you're not able to do that, uh, then you, then this won't be for you today, presently. But uh, for those who are able to, this will, I think you'll really like this. Um, it, it's really going to help to uh, bring some awareness and some um, healing to your uh, some parts of your your neck and throat and head that don't aren't, aren't we don't usually know how to feel. So with your forehead, okay, you're going to now this is going to be very gentle, slow uh, movement. So it should be mostly good. It should not be painful. So just keep that in mind, because if you have a lot of tension in the scalp or forehead or anywhere in this area, then you need to be very, uh, very gentle with this. So start just with imagining that you're nodding your head. Just imagine that you're nodding your head. 
So you're not actually nodding. You're just imagining that you're nodding. And as you're imagining that you're nodding, you might notice what's going to happen if you were to actually nod. What would happen to your the part of your forehead or head that's resting on the floor? So obviously it's going to need to move because the whole head has to move. So it's going to do something like a bit of a rolling movement. And the skin and flesh that's here making contact with the floor, it could move. I want you to also notice that. In fact, since you're here, you could even just do this. You could, while you're resting here, raise your eyebrows and then lower your eyebrows and do that a few times just in a way that's comfortable. So if it's really, if your forehead's really tight, then you, you want to be very gentle. You're not going to hurt yourself, but you just want to be gentle for your own sake. But maybe you can feel how your, your whole brow is actually connected with your scalp. So you can feel how when the brow moves, the forehead moves, scalp moves, so that you can start to feel that all this flesh can really move in a way that you maybe were not aware of, maybe you were aware of, but okay, so this maybe helps you have more awareness of that. Now, see that you can really relax the forehead and scalp. So consciously, now that you've developed that bit of awareness, consciously soften this whole area. And now again, imagine that you're going to nod the head just the tiniest little bit, a very small nod. And notice as you're imagining that and you're relaxing the brow, what's that going to, how might that be? And when you feel ready, then I want you to slowly make the smallest micro nod in, in reality, but just the smallest that you can and then slowly release back to rest. So you're just gonna nod and then come back to rest. And do that repeatedly, slowly. And you can slight, if it's comfortable for you and you're confident about it, you could, you could make it a slightly larger nod, but it's still gonna be a small nod. But so, see, can you, each time you come back to rest, can you really let yourself come even more to rest? No. So this nod, this very small nod, when we come back to rest, it's a pendiculation. So for those who will recall Thomas Hanna's work, pendiculation is significant contribution of his to somatics mm -hmm. on the eccentric contraction phase of the movement we can signal to the nervous system very powerfully how to release the patterns of of uh, tension the sensory motor amnesia so each time that you come back to rest come back to rest even more deeply Okay, so now, of course, uh, you could you could do the opposite. So you could you could you you, you could uh, slightly roll the head in the opposite direction, like as if you were looking up. So you could imagine that, and then when you're ready, you could actually do that movement again, just the smallest movement. Uh, to begin with, and then it's not likely to be a very large movement ever. Um, but you start very, very small, and when you're confident, or if you're confident, you could slightly increase the range, but it's only a little bit, and just see what you discover. So let it be pleasant, maybe even pleasurable.
And <clears throat> so same thing, each time you're gonna come back to rest. So you're gonna roll as if to look up just a little bit and then come back to rest. And each time you come back to rest, really come more deeply to rest. And uh, then if you want, you could even do both coming to rest between, but alternating. So you could nod and then come to rest and then look up and then come to rest, nod and come to rest and do that just a few times if that's comfortable for you. Breathing through the nose, enjoying if you can't do it in a good way, don't do it. Okay, and then you, uh, when you next are at rest, just come to just rest there. And then, of course, you could uh, also, you could also uh, look left and right. So you could explore that as well. So ro rolling just ever so slightly looking left and right. Your nose is probably going to be getting some attention. So gentle, very gentle. We're not, don't, don't like uh, dis dislocate your nose or something like that. Just su super gentle. If it's not, if you can't do it, like I say, if you can't do it in a good way, please don't do it. I, I promise you there are good ways to do it and you can discover those good ways. Do it in, a, do it in the best way you can, gently, with good intention, healing intention, self-care, and it, it will discover even better ways that way. Okay, so when you are ready, then uh, slowly find a way to come back onto all fours, hands and knees. See that you can do it in a really good way so that you're not just flinging yourself into the position, but how do you get there? Get there in a good way, consciously breathing through the nose. And then when you have found yourself in, when you found that posture in a good way, then um, keeping your hands on the floor, but bending the elbows, bring the top of your head to the floor in a way that's comfortable for you. And so wherever, you know, you, there's obviously a lot of variables involved. You could, uh, you know, you could touch your forehead to the floor. You could touch a little further up. You could touch, you know, far back, you know, so you've got to, but you could imagine there's kind of a, a line, midline running there and somewhere along that, that's comfortable for you. You can rest that on the floor in a way that you feel stable, comfortable. And um, if you have a lot of tension in the scalp, this is going to be helpful, but also you need to be, don't hurt yourself because th there can it can, can be very sore and tender if you uh, have a lot of tension there. So um, make sure that it's comfortable. So maybe you need to make sure you have enough padding there, uh, make sure that you're supporting yourself well with your hands. But the idea now is you're now you have now five points of contact on the floor, your hands, your knees, and your head. And your head, and you're wanting to kind of now have all of these points tracking as you slowly rock forward and backward just a little bit. But they're all tracking so that your head is 
moving in a coordinated way with the rest of yourself so that it's rolling on the floor. And as you do this, you're feeling your scalp, feeling your forehead. Let it soften and relax. Trust that your bones can do this. You don't need to tense up your scalp in order to be here. Your scalp can be supple. And, and, and this can be a nice massage for your scalp. As I pointed out before, Iyengar credited uh, his successes to um, uh, in, in large part to headstand. And this gives many of the benefits of headstand, but it's obviously much easier and gentler. Uh, so the very, very powerful thing though, I want you to notice what's going on. Again, you're tracking so that you're, you can feel how everything's moving together. So as you're rocking forward, you can feel how, if you're sensitive, you can feel how the weight uh, rolls forward on the palm, for example. Also rolls on the, you can feel the weight changing on the knee. Similarly, on the head. So that they're all moving together, all in line, because you're rocking forward and backward. So this is sending an enormous amount of valuable information to your nervous system, which is helping your spine to align, helping your uh, your shoulders, your hips, your scalp, everything. And then we'll um, do one last thing here. Remember, only if it's comfortable for you. You can always rest and you don't need to do all of these things. But for those who are comfortable with it, you can make some circles here. So you're rolling the head, keeping the head on the floor, but rolling it in circular. So just choose a direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. We'll reverse it momentarily. And as you're doing this, really now the, the neck is being is needing to coordinate in this very complex way because it's making this whole circular movement. So your neck may not be accustomed to doing this. So it's very capable of doing this and it's very healthy, but be gentle. So this isn't like how hard can you roll your head it's not how much you know it's not like a strength it's not like a gym exercise or anything like that it's it's a it's a it's about coordination so you the strength is in you you have all the strength you have all of the uh everything that's needed nature has provided you your body is perfectly made but we've forgotten and so we just need to reawaken it. So this is just have that in mind. You just make it nice. Make it really nice. Feel good as you're doing it. And if you don't know how to do that, then either find out or don't do it. So you can go the other way now. So if you were going clockwise, go counterclockwise. But really feel that your, your neck, your shoulders, your whole spine is supple capable, confident, strong, coordinated, and that this can feel good. You can really, honestly, I promise you, this is possible. You can feel this. Let it feel good. Don't make it so heavy in the head that it's uncomfortable. So you can take up more of the weight in your hands. You can change the position. You know, if you're too far forward or too far backward, it will make a difference. So you can shorten the distance between your knees and your hands or make it further or, or less distance between knees and hands. So there are variables that you can play with there. And then when you are done with that and you feel satisfied, then slowly make your way to, uh, if possible, to lying down on the back 
And if that's not possible or not comfortable, then just choose any other posture that is comfortable for you. It could be sitting in a chair, uh, whatever, whatever works for you. But just going to take a few minutes to really consciously receive all of the healing energy that we have liberated with this practice. So just make your way to whatever that posture is that feels supported for you so that you can really just let go and receive consciously just for a few minutes. And you could close the eyes if that's comfortable for you. And recall your intention for this practice, your healing intention. And whatever whatever good or bad or whatever else you may have happened in the past hour i want you to know that right now you can receive all of the healing energy so you've done a, an enormous amount of good work whatever obstacles may have surfaced during that, that's also good because it's part of the healing process. So what any of that is wonderful. And now let's just bring a closure to the to this practice by consciously receiving all of that healing energy. And then if you are, well, and I'll just say another word about that. So you can do that. One simple way to do that is how we started just with attention to the breath and an intention that with every inhalation, you're just receiving all of the healing blessings of nature. And with every exhalation, you're surrendering to the divine, knowing that you're cared for. And then that's a, uh, perfectly good place to be if that's where, where you're at and that's what's appropriate for you that's great if if and only if it's um true for you then i will invite you to uh also be willing to uh, participate in this healing experiment in which you can send this healing energy to all the other participants in this uh, meeting, both who, who are here live and anybody who watches this and participates in it. And it can work both ways. So those who, it's independent of time. So all people through all time who participate in this can share in the blessings. So if it feels appropriate to you, you can just intend to share these healing, uh, this healing energy and blessings with all others who participate in this meeting for their good, their highest good, knowing that these blessings are multiplied by sharing them. So even from a selfish perspective, by blessing others and sharing the blessings, the blessings are multiplied and returned to you. It's like pay it forward. So, and then uh, also a perfectly good place to be. And uh, if it's appropriate, I will also invite for anybody who it's appropriate for and you needn't do this unless it's true for you, but if it's true for you, then you may also, I will also invite you simply to surrender the entire entirety of it to the divine with gratitude, knowing that your, your uh, life purpose, your soul purpose is being fulfilled, that you are living your highest good and that you are cared for by the divine so that you need to work so hard and try so hard, but you can honestly just receive that goodness in your life. 
So that is the conclusion for today's guided practice. And take as much time as you would like and um, as, as you have to just continue to receive and soak in that healing energy. And when you're ready to move on to whatever is next for you, then just do so mindfully with awareness, gently, slowly, with a loving intention. And have a positive expectation knowing that this healing continues in your life from here on out. So thank you as always for joining me. Blessings to you all. Bye for now.